in this video i am going to discuss semi empirical mass formula but before going to study this semi empirical mass formula let us recall what is binding energy that is binding energy let us recall binding energy here binding energy is defined as the energy required to separate an atomic nucleus completely into its constituent protons and neutrons that is let us suppose if you consider a nucleus and this nucleus consists of a number of neutrons and protons for example i have taken three protons and three neutrons and we need to and here i am going to separate all these protons and neutrons that is here i have separated this nucleus into its constituent particles but to separate this nucleus into its constituent particles we need to supply some amount of energy this energy we call it as a binding energy in other words we can define binding energy as a, the energy that would be liberated by combining individual protons and neutrons into a single nucleus that is to form a single nucleus from constituent particle some amount of energy is required we call this energy as a binding energy okay now let us see semi empirical mass formula here this formula is used to approximate the mass and various other properties of the atomic nuclei and from its number of protons and neutrons as the name suggests empirical it means it is based partly on theory and partly on empirical measurements and this formula represents the liquid drop model here we are going to write semi empirical mass formula by considering nucleus as a made up of liquid drop okay for most of the nuclei with mass number greater than 20 the binding energy the binding energy is well explained by semi empirical formula on the idea that the nucleus is made up of a liquid drop and one more thing here we have considered that we are going to write semi empirical mass formula by considering nucleus as liquid drop and we know that the mass of the nucleus is given by that is the equation for mass of the nucleus is given by capital m subscript z superscript a which is equals to z into mp plus a minus z into mn minus b of a comma z here m represents the mass of the nucleus and a represents the mass number and z represents the it is atomic number and it represents the number of protons and here z is the number of protons and mp is the mass of the proton and here a minus z gives the number of neutrons and mn is the mass of the neutron and here b is the binding energy that is the amount of energy which is required to break the nucleus into its constituent particles here in this equation we clearly see that when a nucleus 
is separated into its constituent particles then we get separate mass of protons that is in this example we have separated three protons and three neutrons three neutrons when we combine the mass of three protons and the mass of three neutrons we are going to get some total mass and this mass is not equal to the the initial mass of the nucleus that is the individual mass of the protons and neutrons is not equal to the the mass of the nucleus that is there is some mass is missing and this missing mass is converted into binding energy that is the energy which is required to separate these nucleons and here the binding energy the binding energy is calculated empirically as made up of a number of correction terms and it is given by the binding energy is given by e v plus e s plus e c plus e a plus e p here e v e s e c e a e p are the energy correction terms to volume that is volume s yes for surface and c for coulomb and a for asymmetry asymmetric and p for pairing these are the energy correction terms let us study these correction terms one by one okay now let us see the first one that is volume energy volume energy correction here one thing we know that if you consider a nucleus in nucleus there are large number of neutrons and protons are there in the nucleus and each nucleon experiences a strong nuclear force between them let us try to explain it by taking one example let us suppose if i consider two nucleons that is one is proton and another one is neutron here a strong nuclear force is going to exist between these two neutron because of this these two nucleons held together in the nucleus let us suppose i want to separate one nucleon then what is the energy required here let us try to calculate the binding energy which is required to separate these nucleons let us suppose i am going to consider the energy which is required to break these nucleons is u that is u is the energy required to break these two nucleons but we need to calculate the energy which is required to break four nucleon which is equal to here there are totally two nucleons so we can write it as a 1 by 2 u this is the amount of energy which is required to separate a single nucleon okay let us suppose if you consider any one of the nuclear nucleon and this nucleon is going to surrounded by its nearest neighboring nucleons that is if you consider a single nucleon it is surrounded by front side from four nucleons are surrounded and on back side four nucleons are surrounded and on top side and bottom side two nucleons are surrounded and at left side and right side two nucleons are surrounded totally there are 4 plus 4 plus 4 there are totally 12 nucleons are 12 nucleons are surrounded by a single nucleon 
okay let us suppose if you want to separate this nucleon then what is the energy required that is here the amount of energy required to separate single nucleon is energy for nucleon which is equal to 1 by 2 into u this is the energy to separate single nucleon but here a single nucleon is surrounded by 12 nucleon so we can multiply this equation by 12 then here 2 6 here to separate a single nucleon from 12 neighboring nucleons we require 6 u energy this is the amount of energy which is required to separate the single nucleon okay let us suppose if you consider entire volume of the nucleus here each nucleus is surrounded by 12 nucleons and the next nucleon which is surrounded by the 12 nucleons and the next nucleon which is surrounded by the 12 nucleons and if we, if we ignore the fact that the nucleus has a surface then each nucleon is attracted to the same number of nearest neighbors so here we can write the energy which is required to separate all the nucleons inside the nucleus throughout entire volume is 6u into a a is the mass number of the nucleus here or we can write it as a e v is equals to 6 u is a constant so i am going to denote it by a v and it is a this is the equation for volume energy correction now let us see the second one that is surface energy correction here we have already written expression for volume energy correction but such kind of expression is true within the volume of the nucleus but it is not for which is existing on the surface and one more thing the nucleons at the surface of the nucleus have fewer neighbors okay now I am going to consider a nucleus which consists of a nucleons that is neutrons and protons here if you consider this neutron it is going to interact with all its neighbors nucleons but the nucleons which are at the surface they are partly interacting with nucleons and partly with outside and due to this a nucleus gains spherical in shape and also one more thing the nucleons which are at the surface of the nucleus have fewer neighbors so they are less tightly bound and it gives rise to slight reduction in the total binding energy of the nucleus okay now let us try to explain surface energy here we have taken a nucleus and this nucleus is having a radius r and this radius is given by r is equals to r naught a to the power 1 by 3 but the surface area of the nucleus is spherical and it is given by that is the surface area of nucleus is equal to 4 pi r square but we know that 
r is radius and it is given by r naught into a to the power 1 by 3 if you substitute radius value in surface area we are going to get r naught a to the power 1 by 3 whole square or we can write it as a 4 pi r naught square a to the power 2 by 3 and here it is constant we can represent this constant by a s into a to the power 2 by 3 and we are going to represent this correction by e s it is the surface energy correction and here we are going to represent it by negative sign because it is going to decrease the binding energy and one more thing if larger the surface area of the nucleus the greater is the surface energy and here one more thing most of the nucleus are trying to achieve greater stability because of this reason nuclear structure tend to be spherical in shape okay this is energy correction for surface energy